Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at a compact all-in-one printer from Canon that also has some photo printing capabilities. This is their TR7520, and it costs about $130, and we'll be taking a closer look at this thing in just a second. But I do want to mention, in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's step through the hardware now. This is a multifunction printer, which means that you can scan with it. So you've got an auto document feeder up here, and then of course you've got the flatbed over here. Uh, this one, unlike some others I've been seeing recently, still has a fax modem built in, a 33.6K bits per second modem. So you can send faxes to people if they are uh, still receiving them. You can also receive faxes on it too, for that matter. This is a five ink printer, which means that it can do a little better with photos perhaps than uh, printers that only have four inks. And I'll show you some of its photo capabilities in a few minutes. However, when you add more ink, you get a higher cost of ownership. And uh, to replace all five of these inks, it'll cost about $62. So it won't take long for you to double uh, the cost of the printer here in consumables. And that's usually the business model with these devices here. I would say you'll probably get about uh, five or 600 pages or so of medium coverage kind of stuff. So uh, medium coverage might be a document with a bunch of text on it or something. And then if you're printing out photos and other things that take up a larger portion of the page, uh, you'll likely see less performance with the ink cartridges. I'll put a link to a document that Canon has put together with some estimates as to what this printer uh, should be capable of doing. But just know that like most inkjet printers, you will have a high consumable cost here. And it's something uh, worth considering if you are planning to do a lot of high volume printing. Uh, you might do better with a laser printer if you have a higher volume to do, but you won't get, unfortunately, the same photo quality you'll have with an inkjet. So there's a lot of trade-offs to be had, but uh, just know there is a cost of ownership on this one. It can connect up to your computer via USB, but my advice is to connect it up via Wi-Fi, then all the computers in your house or your network at your office or whatever will be able to see it. And what I've got here as an example is a, a Windows device that hasn't yet seen this printer, or at least hasn't installed it yet. It is just on my network here. I've got, it's got the Canon already showing up on its list of printers that it can connect to. And as you can see here, it's already pulling down its drivers automatically, and it should be able to uh, print to this printer here in just a second. Now, one of the things that I noticed with it when I was setting it up was that I had to set up the Wi-Fi uh, through their mobile app on my phone. Even though it's got a, a pretty nice and robust display here, I unfortunately could not get it connected to my Wi-Fi network until I got the phone out to use their uh, less than friendly app to get it all done, which was a disappointment. But once I got it on my network, everything saw it automatically. And they're going to give you a couple of different options to install the printer when you first take it out of the box. My advice is to use the app method just to get it on your Wi-Fi network, and then you can have all of your computers connect in. My experience so far has been Windows and Mac computers both see this thing automatically and find the appropriate drivers to get it up and running. It will also work with AirPrint on your iPad and iPhone. It is compatible also uh, with the Google printing stuff too, which we'll cover a little later in the video. So that's the overall hardware. Let's take a look and see how it performs when it prints and scans and does all the things it's designed to do. Now, before we start printing, let's take a look at paper capacity. You've got a 100-sheet tray here in the front. Not huge, but good enough for small home office kinds of uses. And you can also fit another 100 pages here on the rear manual feeder. This will also take in envelopes and photo paper, which we'll be doing in a few minutes, too. So not a huge amount of paper capacity, but uh, good enough. One thing that's kind of aggravating is that every time you uh, put in the paper tray here, you have to tell it what size paper you have in. It doesn't detect it automatically uh, based on what you're doing. Now, what I'm going to do first as a test is just a simple black and white document here for my iPhone. I'm going to use the air print feature that's built into the phone here. So if I go over to print, uh, what will happen is, is it'll go out on my network and find the printer automatically uh, on my network because both my phone and the printer both reside in the same spot. Now, this will print two-sided duplex documents, which is what we're going to do. So I've got a four-page document here. Uh, it's mostly black and white. So what I'm going to do here is just go over to options and just force it to black and white just so we can see how fast it prints when it's not doing any color. Uh, they say about 15 pages per minute in black and white and 10 pages in color. So I'm going to hit print here. And now it's complaining because it wants you to lift up the control panel in order to start printing. This is one of the things that is a little inelegant about this device. You have to kind of take the printer apart in order to print things out on it. They've got a paper tray here that will also come out. 
uh, so your paper has a place to go. Now you'll see this first page comes out very quickly, and then when we do the duplexing, it's going to suck the page back in, and it kind of sits here and pauses for a second before it does that. So if I was printing all four pages out, uh, one page at a time, they would all come out as quick as you just saw here, but the duplexing does take a little bit longer. So what'll happen next here is it will slowly suck that page back in, flip it over, and then start printing the other side as you can see here right now. So it is uh, capable of doing duplexing, but again, you're not going to be doing a high volume uh, kind of duplex printing here. So let's shift gears now to photo printing. And this printer is a five ink printer and can print edge to edge on photo paper. And I've got a four by six uh, blank sheet loaded up right now. And I put that in the manual feeder. That's the better spot for uh, photo paper. Now you can print edge to edge borderless on a PC or a Mac if you have the drivers installed, which again go in automatically. On mobile devices like the iPhone and the Android uh, operating system, uh, you do need to make sure you've got their app installed in order to get the borderless prints. The Apple printing driver doesn't support borderless prints through photos, so you have to go into the app to print your photos out. Uh, the interface isn't great, but they have uh, made it somewhat easy to get your photos selected. Now what's cool is that we're also going to be taking a look at scanning in a minute and scanning also works here through the app. Now what I'm going to do first here is go over to photo print and what that will do is access my entire photo library here and I can go in and pick out a photo that I wish to print out. So let's go in and see what I've got here. I've got a fun one of my uh, daughter's toy up on top of a tower that we built together. So I can click select here and uh, what you can do is build up a whole library of images that you want to print out and then when you're ready to go, uh, you click on next at the bottom and you have options now for printing everything out. So you can see already I've got it set to four by six. It's going to print uh, one copy of this. We have uh, the border set to borderless. Grayscale is off obviously because we want to print out in color. I can go in here and change those settings if I want. And then if I go over to print, what'll happen now is it will connect to the printer over the network. Again, this phone and the printer are on the same network. And uh, once again, I've got a beep on the screen here and it's telling me the feed cover of the rear tray may be open. So I have to close this thing in the back here and that will get it going. It's often beeping and complaining at me quite a bit here. And I've got to now open the uh, slide panel here, hit OK again and begin printing. So again, it's not the most friendly way to get uh, something printed out here, but we can take a look now and see how fast it prints out out an edge-to-edge -edge photo. This might take a little bit of time. I think they uh, measured this speed at around 37 seconds from start to finish to get uh, the whole photo printed out. So you're not going to be making a huge number of photos very quickly, but it does do a fairly decent job of uh, getting a pretty nice quality image out the door for a relatively low cost printer here. So let's let this thing print out here and I'll uh, pull it out here when it is done printing. It's coming out very slowly. I'm not going to move the printer because it might impact things, but you can see how fast it comes out. And it's almost done. And there we go. So it took about 30 seconds or so to get the print, the print out. It looks a little more washed out than it does on my phone. So I'll pull it back up on the phone here so you can get a uh, you know, head to head comparison here based on what it looks like on my screen. Uh, there are some image setting adjustments that you can make inside the app to maybe darken it up a little bit if it's not to your liking. Now I found photo quality out of this not to be the best I've seen. There's certainly dedicated photo printers that do better, but for a home office multifunction at around this price point, it's not bad. You do get a better range of colors and you might see out of a four color inkjet printer with some uh, decent prints if you might need to print out something for a client every once in a while. So that was a good thing. I am seeing a lot of graininess on uh, the prints though. So again, it's not going to be as perfect as a photo printer might be, but it will do better printing photos occasionally if that's something you'll find yourself doing, uh, at least as compared to other home office printers. Now for scanning and copying and whatnot, you do have the document feeder on the top. This will take 20 pages at a time. It does not duplex though. So while it can print on both sides of the page when you're printing automatically, if you want to do duplex scanning, it's going to scan in uh, one set of the document, then you have to flip it over and run it through again. It'll prompt you for that, but uh, not so elegant in execution. Uh, but if you wanna make a copy here just to see how well the uh, device scans, we're going to switch over to our display here. I'm going to say copy and then it will uh, give us some options for a standard copy, a borderless copy if we've got a photo or something like that. You can also do a frame erase copy. So if you have a uh, book, for example, on the uh, glass here, it'll get rid of some of the uh, extra black stuff that might appear on page. But we'll just do a standard copy here. Uh, we'll say one copy, but we do have a bunch of settings we can uh, look at here. So you do have quite a bit of things you can 
uh, have it do for you. But you will, of course, see this duplexing scanning option. And again, uh, this is not a, a true duplexer and that you do have to do this manually, but you can tell the printer to print two-sided uh, when you do run off the copy. It even has a collation option here too. So you can collate uh, multiple page documents so they print out in the same order every time. Uh, what I'm gonna do though is just uh, hit the uh, start button here. So we'll just have it do a black, uh, black and white copy here. And uh, you can see now the documents are scanning. It didn't load it in the right way here. We'll see if it manages to get through. There we go. So you can see what the scan speed is here. This is not all that fast. This is about what I see on uh, typical uh, home printers like this, but good enough for a couple of documents that you have to scan in every once in a while. It also supports network scanning. So you can, uh, again, connect up your phone or connect it up to a computer and scan the documents in that way. This will also connect to a number of popular cloud providers too, where it can drop off a PDF into your Dropbox or your Google Drive drive or something like that as well. So not a hugely fast scanner, no duplexing, but good enough for basic transportation. And if I wanted to send the fax, the same kind of deal here. You can click on fax and walk through the process of scanning the document and sending it off to some other place. I do want to show you two more things though, and those are in the settings menu here. Uh, the first one's kind of important because uh, this is a printer that connects itself to the internet. And as we know in this internet of things world, uh, firmware upgrades are really important and it doesn't look like this one is installing them automatically. You have to go and seek them out. So I'm gonna go into settings here. I'm going to scroll over to device settings and if I scroll down to the bottom here, there is an option for a firmware update. And if I take a look here and click on install update, uh, it turns out there is an update waiting for me on this printer. And I would probably uh, add it to your to-do list to check every once in a while to make sure that you are at the current firmware. Click on that little button there to uh, double check because if there is a security issue, uh, your printer might int introduce a vulnerability onto your network that you don't want to have. So spend some time in here. I'm gonna install this firmware update later tonight uh, just to make sure that I am up to date. Unfortunately, when you check the current version, it doesn't tell you that you're not on the current version. So this is what I am running currently, but as you just saw, uh, there was an update available. Now, if you have a Chromebook and want to print from uh, the Chrome OS, there is a web service setup option here. And if you click on that, uh, you'll see an option for Google Cloud Print. And what it will do here is uh, print out a document that you can then take over to your computer and it will connect this up with your Google account so that when you're on your Chromebook or any uh, Google Cloud Print device, it will find this and be able to print to it. In fact, with Google Cloud Print, you can print to your printer over the internet too when you're not at home. So that's a pretty cool feature. I might cover that on my extras channel uh, to show you how all of that works. There's a lot of other cloud functionality on here that you might want to check out. Uh, but again, keep your firmware up to date on this printer because there's a attack vector with these things. It's not just Canon, it's everybody. And you wanna make sure that your printer has all of its most up-to-date firmware uh, whenever you want to use it. So overall, not a bad printer. Uh, I wish that you could set it up from the control panel by itself without having to attach a computer or a phone to it first. Uh, because what's funny is now I can change the Wi-Fi that I'm using to connect to it, but uh, when I first hooked it up, it required me, forced me to use uh, some other device to get everything going. I'd love to just get it on my network and then just have everything connect into it. Uh, that's how other brands work, not this one. The setup process was a little too arduous, especially given that you have a touch screen that you can interact with on the front of the display. I am also concerned about the ink cost here because both Epson and HP have taken steps to uh, reduce the cost of ink for customers with very different strategies. HP has a mail-in thing that they're doing. Uh, it, Epson, of course, has printers with now enormous ink tanks that last for a year or two. So uh, Canon is still uh, offering you inks the old fashioned way, at least with this printer. And it would be nice to see some additional uh, options to reduce the overall cost of consumables because as we saw at the outset, uh, two ink swaps on this one will equal the cost of the printer. And I think that is where a bulk of their profit margin is probably lying in. But uh, the good news is from a quality standpoint, it seems to print out pretty nicely. You do have the option now of printing uh, five color prints, not perfect compared to a photo printer, but decent enough. And for $130 for a small home office printer that you might print to every uh, couple of hours or so or less, not a bad little printer to have on your desk. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, John Prawl, William Miller, and Charlie Walden. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.
Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.